This is Dr. Drew Hall with Upper Cervical Healthcare of Los Angeles and Carson. Today what I want to talk about is dystonia or spasmodic torticollis. They're kind of in the same family. They have similar symptoms and similar mechanisms. Um, over the 18 years that we've been in practice here in Los Angeles, we've probably seen, I don't know, 20 uh, spasmodic torticollis cases and probably another 20 to 30 dystonia cases. Some of them respond amazingly well to upper cervical care. Some do mildly better, and yes, we've had some cases that don't clear up, but by and large, <clears throat> correcting the upper cervical spine and allowing the central nervous system to function better is a very um, powerful uh, healing procedure for these types of patients. Now, a lot of the cases that we've seen, they've had a prior whiplash type trauma prior to the onset, We've also had several cases who have had um, psychiatric trouble and um, were either injected by Haldol or were taking antipsychotic medication and one of the side effects from those kinds of medication is uh, torticollis and dystonia. So now what do we do in our office that can help this patterning of muscles that has kind of a mind of its own and keeps pulling against the person's voluntary control. And for those of you who don't know what spasmodic torticollis is, there's a varying ways in which it presents, but basically it's an involuntary muscle contraction that happens. A lot of times they, the head pulls off to one side and they can't help it. It can either be to the right or the left. And we've also had some cases where the back part of the muscles are in severe spasm. We have, have had two cases where the back part of the head is actually touching the upper back and it's stuck there and against the person's will, obviously. And you can imagine what this does to someone's life and their inability to function normally and the social stigma that they get to experience with all the people staring at them isn't fun. So I'm happy to say We've had two cases recently that actually have done quite well. They haven't 100% recovered, but the we have one case that's about 22 and the pulling, the involuntary pulling has decreased by about 60%, which has made his life much better. But so let's talk about upper the upper cervical spine and more specifically upper cervical healthcare and what we do in the office and how it can help these people. So the underlying mechanism of what's happening in these cases is you have a, a aberrant nerve signal that's telling the muscles to contract when it shouldn't be. And there's some evidence that suggests that the upper cervical spine, when there's been injury and one of the joints has become locked out of position, when a joint's not moving the way that it should, especially at C1, 2, or 3, it can send aberrant postural muscle tone signals to the, spot, to the muscles from the spine, and that can cause that underlying patterning that exists there. So what do we do in our office that helps these patients? Patient comes into the office, we run them through an extensive history, we run a, a complete neurological workup to determine that neuro neurological workup is, has one fold, is to find out and locate whether there's one of the vertebrae in the upper neck that's structurally misaligned out of its position, locked under the skull, and irritating the central nervous system. So if we run through those tests and we find that they have that going on, we then take very precise imaging that looks at the joints. This is the atlas. There's a joint on the right and there's a joint on the left and those two joints fit to the base of the skull. And where any joint fits in the body, they're a mirror image of one another. They fit like two halves of the peanut shell. And so if that segment is locked out of position uh, and we take an x-ray of the joint, we can actually see what direction and the magnitude, how many millimeters it's locked out of position. We can also see how the joints are angulated because everyone's different. And the reason I bring this up, it's really important to A, know which vertebra is in trouble, and B, how the vertebra joints are built and how, what direction it's off so we can make a very precise light tap correction to set the vertebra back under the body's control. Now, once that segment that's stuck and that was interfering with the cord is back in position, the soft tissue, the ligaments, uh, will start to mend, heal, and repair. And the neurology, most important in these dystonia and spasmodic torticollis cases, that pattern and that abnormal nerve impulse that's causing those muscles to contract when they shouldn't be, once that joint's moving the way that it should be, the nervous system will over time start to normalize. And in many of these cases, that involuntary contraction that they're experiencing 
will slowly start to dissipate. And like most cases, what we generally find is as they go through care, they will just gradually in cycles work their way out of it. So if you or a loved one is suffering with the stony or spasmodic torticollis um, and you are interested in upper cervical care, our, we have two offices in Los Angeles area. Uh, we offer free consultation. And if you're interested, our Los Angeles office number is 213-399-7772. And our Carson office number is 310-324-6172. If you're outside the Los Angeles area and you've come across this video um, and you're interested in seeing someone in your locale, you can call either one of our numbers. We'd be happy uh, to find you someone in your location that can help. Hope this video was educational maybe um, gave some insights that people that are suffering with spasmodic torticollis and dystonia, um, some information that maybe you haven't come across and how the nervous system can play a role and how correcting the upper cervical spine can help. So thanks for listening and hope to see some of you soon.